hello everyone and welcome to the Contingency Plan Podcast. My name is Jedi Master David and with me, as always, is Darth Austin. Hello everyone. Well, you know, you know guys, we've, uh, we've been working really hard on this podcast. So hard. It's been... It's Got been, so far. In the end, it doesn't even matter. Uh, oh, I don't even want to make a joke after that. <laughs> All right, guys, we're still a reread podcast. We're rereading through the new Jedi Order, Dark Tide 2, Ruin. Did I ruin it? You for ruined you? it. I had an idea, but maybe I'll do that next time. <laughs> oh, yes, folks. Part two of the Dark Tide 2, Ruin book. Uh, we are going to be going through chapters 10 through 18. And uh, yeah, I think things have continued to stay progressively good. Yes. Crack analytical announcement there. <laughs> yes. Um. <laughs> yes. Yes. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, um, how's it been going this week? It's been an all right week. Except yeah, you... for the fact that I'm trying to sell everything and yeah. buy a new vehicle, and that's never fun. Selling yeah. and buying is a terrible, terrible thing. Yeah, your poor old truck finally took its final crap on you. Yeah. That well, I'm willing to deal with. At well, least. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, and you yeah. haven't been much. You haven't had much fun either with uh, car shopping. No, like, I think I'm done with it. I'm just gonna throw throw money at the truck, make it a super super cool truck, and then just truck. you know, a couple years down the road, once that's all paid off, then I'll do something else and we'll figure it out. Adult He's gonna stuff. rice it, bro. He's gonna rice it out. <laughs> Custom exhaust <laughs> fart can. I'm gonna put on dual pipes like a semi. Stacks. Do stacks. Cut holes in your tanno cover and do stacks. Stacks on stacks on stacks. There are going to be four stacks back there just pouring out all that black smoke. It'll be super good. Two of them aren't even connected to anything. <laughs> it's just for the look of it. <laughs> I always thought that was the dumbest thing when yeah. people have put stacks on, like, just random trucks. Yeah. You know, I just want to spray my black smoke over everything. Exactly. And they... Which is just a they, symptom just of not. To kill everybody. It's just a symptom of not really taking care of your truck. You shouldn't yeah. be having that yeah. much carbon come out of it. Yeah. You're not clearing your system. Blah 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 blah. But it's cool. No, it's not. Rolling coal. Rolling. Yeah, rolling coal is dumb. It's it's stupid. Yeah. Uh, so no, but yeah, I'm just gonna do some improvements on my vehicle, and then probably do some home improvements. And heck, I don't know. Things. Any self improvements. <laughs> So, self improvements. Yes. Go take care of yourself. Have a spa day. No, I'll tell you, I could go for a nice massage, though. Like a good trip to the chiropractor and a massage. I could go for that. <laughs> I did that about a month ago and I was sore the next day, but oh, it feels so good. Yeah. Well, I, you, you know, get to that routine up, so. of everything. You don't really think to take care of yourself. Every once in a true. while, you should. You really should. It is very true. You're worth it. You're worth it. Yeah. Except for you, Bill. You're not worth it. Wait, I'm Bill. We've got like three <laughs> Bills in our audience. We just lost them all. I'm Bill. Why aren't I worth it? Because you know why. You wow. know what you did last summer. Wow. That's a well, that's an, that's an old <laughs> reference now. Jeez, I don't know if a lot of people would even know what the heck that especially younger folks. Probably not. You know what I did last summer? What? Oh, it's like, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> oh, everybody did that for a while. Mm -hmm. Goodness. Okay. So anyway, we've not had a ton of news, but, you know, we... Speculation. Tons. News. Not much. Yeah. You kind of had an interesting sort of thought. And it's a dangerous thought. Well, at first it's like, well, that's dumb. But then I started thinking about it. It's like, you know what? It might it's not. It's still dumb. It's but. dumb, but it's <laughs> it's it's a thought. So go ahead and tell them what you were thinking about. Uh, I've been rewatching all of Star Wars, trying to hit everything point for point, you know, in the timeline. And I'm on Empire Strikes Back, and I was watching it the other day, and I just kept thinking, you know, all anyone does anymore is remakes movies, and we've got a new solo. What if they remake the original trilogy right now? What if we have the new Lando, the new Solo, but we get a new Luke and Leia and a new old Ben? 
Ewan McGregor as old Ben Kenobi. <laughs> That's, that's why a, he signed on. That's a Kenobi series. <laughs> that's why he signed Come on. <laughs> yeah, I mean there has there have been a lot of remakes. Um, I mean most notably things like you know they remade Aladdin. Well, they're doing like live action cartoons yeah, a lot yeah, now. That's and, <laughs> I mean there there's always been a history of trying to remake films. I mean like Red Dawn. I remember that that remake sucked. It, it was nothing in comparison to the old movie. Uh, Robo. Cop, I believe they remade yeah. that as well. That kind of sucked as well. Um, God, what else? There's well, what there, else didn't they do? Well, there's a ton we're just not necessarily yeah. thinking about. We didn't we didn't prepare. Yeah. With a list of remakes. That's fine. Uh oh God. So could I see Hollywood discussing it? Yeah. I mean, I could see him. I mean we read the story retold. With younger, more hot actors and actresses better, from today. Better oh. acting and CGI. <laughs> no practical effects. Uh, that's part of the reason why I love it so much was the practical mm-hmm. effects. A little, um, little puppet Yoda. And our, yeah, I think a lot of the... Tauntauns. Well, a lot of the... You, know, you had the remastered stuff or like redone and he was putting all this... Hey, I'm gonna add more creatures and all yeah. this stuff. It's like I, I didn't Don't really like. It. I didn't really like that as much. The only thing, and I might actually catch some crap for this because I know that a couple people really don't like this. But so we have the scene in New Hope where Jabba, in quotations, mm-hmm. confronts Solo at the landing pad. Well, initially that was just a guy, mm-hmm. and then they CGI'd in Jabba. Yeah. Uh, later. But, I mean, I I actually was cool with that. Now, it was like the 1996 remake was like a really, really crappy mm. polygonal, and that was bad. But in subsequent remakes, I mean, it's fine. I, I don't know. I think, it's, I think that was okay, but like just some of the other, it, it's just so blatant. Yeah. Sometimes they don't blend in enough. It's just so blatant. Well, it's like you have so that. many practical effects, and then you see CGI. It's like whoa! <laughs> it makes it stand out worse. Yeah, and like the the different song in Jabba's Palace. Yeah, you know that. I don't. I didn't really care for that. And then of course, your your favorite thing ever done in Return of the Jedi, the Force Ghost. Oh yeah, <laughs> putting Anakin in yeah. there as opposed to the actor. Yeah, I I wasn't a huge because like, how the hell would Luke know who that is? Right. Yeah. Like, who's that younger guy with the scar in his face? That's supposed to be somebody I know. Wait a minute. How did Dad even learn how to become a Force ghost? He didn't study that. Yeah. He didn't find inner peace. He was Darth Vader. <laughs> He's just so powerful. Why yeah. Don Jin talked to Darth Vader throughout the years. As he died. It's like when Luke left him, he wasn't actually dead. I'm not dead. And he just, gone. Hey, buddy. He just wakes up and he's like, oh, crap. Where'd my son go? I didn't actually die. I kind of want him. What happened? Or no. He, well, he did take him with him. So he's like on the back of the shuttle. It's like, now I'm burning. It's like, oh, crap. I can't really get any vocals out here. I can't tell Luke to help me. I'm still alive, Luke. Help me. Help. Oh, hey, Qui-Gon. I wish you would have been my master. Oh. What's up, dude? Qui-Gon, jeez, it's been, it's been forever. What? It's been like 40 years, man. What's up? What are you doing? It's like, Anakin, I'm here to teach you how to become a ghost. It's like, I told you not to kill them. Well, I'm not, I'm not dead. And then you killed them all. <laughs> I'm not dead yet, but he will be. No, but I'm not dead. No, but soon, he, to, soon, he soon will be. You need to find inner peace, like in the next 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, you don't have long, Annie. Do it now, or you know, you go to hell with Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> this I want to see Annie again. Uh, no, there's nothing wrong with Jar Jar. He's he was a fun character when he came out. Oh man, yeah, that would be her- that would be horrible. I think for a second you want to see Heresy. <laughs> well, maybe Harrison Dula. What? We'll talk Harry about her. Ford. We'll talk about her later. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I, no. Just no. Yeah. How about a big resounding no? Who would play Luke? I don't know. How could you even do that right I, now? I don't even know. Logic would be Luke. Liam Hemsworth. Logic would be Luke. Chris Hemsworth. 
A. Hemsworth, <laughs> Chris Evans. <laughs> The guy that plays Solo will be both Luke and Solo. <laughs> oh, Alden Ehrenreich plays every character. Time to put the cinnamon buns on your head. Benedict Cumberbatch will be Luke Skywalker. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Martin Freeman. Morgan Freeman. No, no, not Morgan Freeman. <laughs> talk, about, talk about The Hobbit, man. <laughs> Jesus. Who would be Leia? I don't know, some hot girl. Ariana Grande will be. No. <laughs> yeah. That'd be terrible. Get, be. get her out. She's like she's like three foot tall. I, I mean, granted, Carrie Fisher was short too, <laughs> but darn, you don't need that. <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm good on that. I don't even want to speculate about it anymore. No. Let's get in the reread. Yeah. Where's my book? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> you just covered it. Oh man! So we are going We're more tired as the day progresses, and it's 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 early. Noon. It's early in the day, so we are getting into chapter ten, which is kind of an interesting sort of thing. So we've got our plans laid out. People are going to be going on missions, and we have Corin, Jason, and Ganner aboard the uh, Last Hope. Yeah. I wrote that down. It's like this doesn't feel like a good omen. The last hope? You're our only hope. No, you're our last hope. All right, we're going to be going on the new hope. I mean, last hope. No, yeah. no, no, I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> well, let's be kind of quick about this because there's not like a ton-ton here, but... A ton-ton. Um, there's not a ton-ton There's not here. a ton-ton here either. Ton-ton just out in space. <laughs> oh! There's a guy inside the ton-ton <laughs> staying warm in the vacuum of space. Now you're just getting silly. Uh, so anyway... The the plan basically was to have the last hope effectively look like it, you know, was the crew going down the landing. Now they also Crash have landing. they also have another smaller craft. What the heck was that called? I didn't write the. I might have that. The Hold smaller craft. Best chance. Best chance. So the best chance is basically a smaller ship inside of the last hope. So you've got the best chance in the last hope. Yeah. Sounds like Ryan Johnson. To me. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> uh, so they set up, char- they set off charges using the force, um, you know, blast a ship out and then away they go on their reconnaissance mission. But you know, what's really important about this chapter on page? Uh, let's see. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what page it was on. I didn't. I didn't write down the page for this, but we get an we get a re explanation of why Jane is called Sticks. Oh my God, we do. <laughs> I forgot about that. Well, you know, it's because I have you know a lightsaber, which kind of looks like a stick, and then I have a stick in my my uh you know X wing. So you know they they call me Sticks because I've got two sticks, not just one stick, but two sticks. You guys, you're so imaginative. I'm just gonna retell this story because really, you all blocked it out from the last book. It's really <laughs> dumb. It's such a dumb nickname. I feel like the next couple chapters are like the rehash of Dark Tide One in a bit. I know. Well, we're going to tell our stories, and you're going to like it. You didn't like it. We're going to remind you. Oh, God. So anyway, we do have a little bit of a uh, little bit of a battle here as well with a couple of skips. And this is actually one thing that uh, old Michael A. Stackpole writes pretty well. He writes space battles pretty yes. decently. Yes, he does. Um, what chapter or what page is that on? Well, we're in Chapter 10. Yeah. Kind Which of all this starts on, uh, on uh, page 74. 74. And I don't really need to read all of this a ton, but they are continuing to use this uh, tactic of overloading the Dobbin Basils mm-hmm. with a ton of laser fire. And then quadding it up at the end. Right. Well, and then the other part is is moving around because the Basil has to move around uh, in order to, you know, catch the bolts. You just kind of imagine this Basil on a meteor just kind of floating around yeah. in space. Yeah, it kind of That's seemed the weird. the only way I could imagine it, honestly. But, yeah, <laughs> it's not only shields, but it's it's propulsion, too. But again, given if you were to take that away, these ships are really garbage. Yeah, they don't know how to fly, really. <laughs> I mean, well, they wouldn't fly without the Basil, because right. again, it's its propulsion. Yeah. But it's literally strictly the Dov and Basil that makes these ships anything. Yeah. 
Without them, they're just a flying hunk of rock with little lava well, they're missiles. They're not even flying. They're just kind of floating. Well, yeah, floating, floating rock. You got to throw them out there, you know, real far. Uh, the only other thing that I... There, there was in a little italicized. In combat, can overkill ever be gross? Because yeah. It, yeah, it can. Yeah. <laughs> Because they they start to talk about like some of the like the insects they use and all this stuff. It's like could because the Yuzen Vong their their weaponry is kind of overkill. Like yeah. I'm going to throw lava at you and watch it just burn your ship up. I'm going to throw this razor bug at you and just watch it like tear razor you, you, tear you in two. <laughs> <sighs> but anyway, they are able to dispatch the uh, couple of skips. With the help of little Annie. Yep, yep. Annie's out there, too. Um, You know, the last hope's blown. Uh, You know, once he goes, you blow yours. Completely read out of context. The last hope blew its best chance. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, they are able to get out there. But the one thing, the only other thing I wanted to mention here was um, Jaina did have, like, a pretty harsh reaction to seeing this and she's like she wasn't told what she's like what the, what the hell happening? is that and jason feels this and he's like i wish i could have told her you know i want i want to be able to reach out and tell her well i mean you know you could i mean you could reach out with the force i mean you know luke did it you know from uh, the long way away to Leia and brought him back to her but hey just what do i know show that you're still alive just kind of like not hide <clears throat> what do i know <sighs> she does kind of work it out here so anything else you wanted to Talk about chapter 10 before we go into 11? No. Nah, okay. I'm good. I'm good. Chapter 11 starts to get a, a, a little bit of a little bit more lore, which I thought was interesting. So Luke, uh, Mara go off to, uh, did they say the planet here? Anyway, they go to a planet well, and, they, and meet with uh, Mirix, Vortex. Tarek, Horn. I believe it's Vortex, isn't it? Or is it a point between? Maybe. That? I can't maybe, remember. maybe. So this uh, this planet, we start talking about the, the, what was it, the music of the winds or whatever, and mm-hmm. it's kind of like a peaceable sort of place. Mm-hmm. And Mirix, uh, Mirix, uh, you know, she... She may or may not have killed billions of people. Yeah. Who's uh, to tell? You know, she may or may not have created super weapons and known how to do that sort of stuff and whatever. But she's cool. She's cool now. She's a good person. No, I mean, she she's not a bad guy, but she did develop... What was the weapon? Do you remember the weapon she... Was it Sun Crusher? The original yeah, Sun, Sun Crusher? Crusher? yeah. That she created? So, you know, it's it's one of those things where... Well, she multiple, actually. Yeah. Uh, she worked for them all, and she oh, there made you go. multiple. Okay. Gotcha. So right now she's kind of in this way of atonement and she sees, you know, Master Skywalker coming and she's like, oh, no. (laughs) Uh, By the way, we just kind of messed up a little on the the name. It wasn't Mirax. It was uh, Kui Zux, Mirax's uh, Corrin's wife. Oh, oops. (laughs) (laughs) Corrin's wife made super weapon. (laughs) Dang it, Corrin. (laughs) My bad. Um, yeah, but uh, they meet Queezux, a woman trying to atone for her. Yeah, past. you're right. It, it, that's also in my in my notation. I just yeah okay. Anyway, Mirix went with it. Went, went with Luke and them. Yeah, <laughs> that's my bad. <laughs> this is why you tune in this podcast she, for all this intricate knowledge of everything. She didn't make the weapon. She's just going to meet the person who. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and she has her little droid Whistler. Yeah. Give me a vial now. We're just uh, making all these cool all these 90s references. references. No uh, yes. So, Kui. Was it, what was the full name again? Kui-Zux. Kui-Zux. X-U-X. Yeah, that's right. So, oh, uh, man. So, she again, she's trying to live more of a peaceful yeah. life here. And she references Kip. They do have uh, some past together. Well, Kip wipes her memories of... All the atrocities, them. so she doesn't feel this pain anymore. I'm yeah. sure there were some tactical reasons as well. She asked about him. Well, I think I think he was specifically trying to steal ah, the knowledge. Yeah, true. 
And uh, she asked about him and asked if he could come to the planet and yep. uh, find some inner peace. And Luke references he certainly could use some. And For sure. Well, and we also do get that Deshar Kor did show up. Mm-hmm. Um, and she was looking for like maybe like a third Death Star. Or a second eye of Palpatine. Exactly. So she was kind of funny. It was like, well, they only made one eye of Palpatine. It's like, well, there are two eyes in every head. Exactly. So why wouldn't they have a second eye of Palpatine? Well, some species have 30 eyes. There are 30 eyes of Palpatine. Why not? (laughs) So, yeah, it is confirmation. Desharkor is indeed looking for a super weapon or how to put one together. Um, And it it seems like... Backyard bomb. Yeah, it kind of seems like we're leaning towards either the Eye of Palpatine or potentially another Sun Crusher. Mm-hmm. One, one of one of the two. Uh, that's... How's she going to afford this, by the way? Like, is she rich? All those Imperial credits, man. I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, we do have a little bit of a back and forth between uh, Mara here. Uh, sort of about the merits of even thinking about super weapons. Uh, let's see here. I can understand. Um, it is better. She has made a principled stand and would defend it with her life. This is Luke talking. Then it is for her to become a tool of those who would use her work for ill. But Luke, what if there is no other way to stop the use in Vong? Then my dear, we must question whether they are meant to be stopped or if we have missed the other solution. I don't like having options eliminated, but neither do I like having weapons that can destroy planets and stars being made available. I have a question for you since you knew the emperor, would he have only one ship named eye of Palpatine or the emperor or would the emperor have had two eyes? So this is, this is part of the, the argument. Well, like Mars is like, well, I mean, it's the old argument. So if I have a nuclear warhead and I detonate it somewhere where there's evil people, will, would that save billions at the cost of, you know, billions. killing killing whatever number? Is that right? You know, could, could, could cons- uh, well, consider Japan. Mm-hmm. W- did, w- did the detonation of the nuclear devices on Hiroshima and Nagasaki really and truly do good. Now, it kind of took Japan out of the war, but did it really do good? Because then we had the Cold War and the you know this whole rush for nuclear warheads, the Cuban Missile Crisis, all the issues we're having with North Korea, everybody's scrambling for these weapons. But if we didn't have them, would somebody else have taken advantage, blah, blah, blah. So there's a lot of intricacies there, and it just it, it leads to an interesting path of human nature where we say, why do we have to have the bigger gun? Well... I can see Mars' point to some extent, but she becomes a terrorist in her own right by using that weapon to destroy the Yuzhen Vong. For sure. It's certainly not the Jedi way. All right. What do you think, Chapter 12? Yeah. No, let's just skip to 14. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Yes. (laughs) Yes. This is uh, kind of a weird chapter. We have... Oh, you didn't like it? (laughs) Well, we have a w- this weird heart to heart. He made a new friend. Between, I have a friend. Well, between Anakin and Chalco. So Anakin's left on the ship, right? Mm-hmm. So he and Chalco kind of get to talking, I guess. And like Chalco turns into a confrontation because he wants to leave. Well, kind of, yeah. But I mean, Chalco's like, you know, I'm going to take a look around. Master Luke told us. To stay, he's your master, not mine. Um, you think you can stop me? Yeah. You think I can't? I mean, well, do you think I can, can't think you can, can't do what I think you can? Can or no. cannot? <laughs> master Yolda, Yol, Yolda, Yolda, Yoda, <laughs> that's a new master, by the way. Yoda told my master that there was no try, only do or do not. Well, that's great. References. 
Well, there was also there was also a part here in a previous chapter where like Chalco is like kind of coming out of his seat, and he, you know Anna can use the force to basically hold him down without yeah. him knowing it. Yeah. It's like if I could hold you down with the force, I could definitely hold you down with the force against a wall. But I won't. And stop you. Because Mara said I use the force too much. <laughs> yeah. Eh, let's see here what uh, what we could potentially read here. Because, again, it, it kind of gets well, into the Chewy a, thing, too. Yeah. <laughs> I just, you know. Even, even Chalco has to kind of comfort him on the Chewy thing. It's like now you're just having strangers, you know, comfort you about it. I don't know. It, it just, it just, it, it seemed really out of place. Because, like, who yeah. the hell is Chalco? But Why he, are you opening up about Chewie to him? It's weird. So, but he does say your father's Han Solo, right? Yes. I saw him a couple of times recently, kind of torn up about his partner's death. Um, and I can not slowly. It hit him very hard. They must have been good friends. Never had much, uh, never had much truck. Does yours say truck, yeah. by the way? Um, I feel like it meant to say luck. But or apparently, or something. I he, don't know. He, he, did, he didn't have much truck with Wookiees, myself. Yeah. Don't know that I've ever been that close to anyone. They'd been through a lot together. Chewy was a constant in my dad's life and in mine. He was always there and not, and now he's not. Okay? Uh, <laughs> just some. Mm-hmm. He was always there, but now he's, he's not. not. I don't know. Sorry. It's, it's, I don't want to tear apart dialogue, but come on. Look, kid, I uh, may not have chosen a close friend like that, you know, but I can understand the hurting. You know, I, I just said I don't have anybody I've ever been close to, but I, I totally understand. Uh, <laughs> you get used to people being around, seeing them in a spaceport, having them in the next cell, that kind of thing, you know, <laughs> scum and villainy stuff. Yeah. And, you know, one day you wake up and they've been paroled or something. <laughs> It's like, it's like I have no idea what I'm talking about, but I'm trying to relight my skeezy life. I don't like people like you do. I have no friends, but I kind of understand. You know, I remember this one guy, Chuck. He was in the cell next to me. We used to pass death sticks between each other. He was a real cool guy. But, you know, then one day he just, they paroled him and he left, and I was still stuck in the cell, so that kind of sucked. And I, you know, it's not Never like saw I, the guy's face. Didn't really know much about him, yeah. but it did suck. I understand what you're going through. Yeah, <laughs> totally understand losing a lifelong friend and, and you know, confidant. It's, it's great. Oh, he was like an uncle to you? Yeah, I don't have a family. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> you never know if you're going to see them or the credits they lost to you playing yeah, Sabah. Yeah, I love how that was part of <laughs> I mean, look, I'm not good at expressing myself here. <clears throat> well, you know, Anakin nodded because he understands Sabak debt. Uh, thanks. I understand. When you get to know someone, you can be hurt if they uh, go away suddenly. The hurt is really big and really, really strong. strong. Like Chewy. He was so big and strong and hairy. Chewy, well, he's always been there, smiling, joking, never complaining. Then yeah, I Chewy never complained about anything yeah when i climbed all over him or messed up something he was doing he was just a rock (laughs) a really big rock he was a rock and when that goes away well if he was a rock why couldn't you use the force to lift him into that ship boy oh (laughs) oh crap but he wasn't the only rock in your life kid you have your uncle and your mother and your father not your, not your siblings, though. They're not yeah, rocks. They're not rocks. They're pebbles. <laughs> <laughs> they're well, twin pebbles. You, well, you saw my father. He's been um, distant. Yeah, my mom has always uh, has had thing. My mom has had things to do. That's a weird way to. Yeah, that. it is what it is. She's been supportive, but we've been apart. Uncle Luke, he's been great, but he has a lot to do. <laughs> it's okay though. Everybody has a lot to do. Chewie was the only one that liked me. Chewie was the only one who had never had anything to do, so I could climb all over him like a rock. Mess up all the stuff he's working on. <laughs> yes, and then the sage... Luke ad- just won't let me climb all over him exactly. like Chewie did. And then the sage advice continues, don't grow up too fast, kid, but you got to grow up, you know. You, you, you don't. You become like me. Yeah. Maybe growing up fast isn't all that bad. So, so you grow know, up fast, kid. So don't grow up fast, but grow up faster so you're not like me who grew up not Slower. at all and... Just now, want death stick? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that was 
That was that part of the book. The key is just growing up, I guess. Fast or slow, no difference. <laughs> so the the weird heart to heart between two people who don't know each other. Thankfully, Chowko is not a predator or some sort of like <laughs> killer or just some awkward guy who. Oh, he is that. I, he. The only thing that I felt a little weird about, Chowko becomes oddly loyal. To this group very quickly. Yeah. It's like, unlike DJ, who just sells them out for creative credits, Chowko's like, I like this guy. You know, he, he kind of just pulled me from my normal course of business, you know, and I'm not, like, making money or anything right now, but I like this kid. He's cool. Bring me into a war. I could, I could do that. Yeah, I mean, most dangerous stuff, it doesn't matter. I, you know, I like it. Uh, chasing a rogue Jedi, yeah, I'm cool with that. So then... Now my moths. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> this was... Uh, this probably could spawn a T-shirt. So we get a little bit more... With, might. with Admiral Gillard Pelion. And this is the... Uh, kind of the council. The moth council. And I'm just going to say it here up front. The council of moths. He eventually has some dialogue where everybody's arguing. He's just like, my moths. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I thought that was so funny. <laughs> it's like, moths, please. <laughs> <laughs> There's something funny about the word moth. I know. Like, how Grand we... Moth Tarkin. Such a strong name, but then yeah. there's moth. I mean, he's also Governor Tarkin. Yeah. He probably preferred that. I, I would take Governor <laughs> over moth. What? <sighs> who came up with the term moth? Was it the emperor? I, I've never looked into that. Was it, was it a weird... Naboo thing or something? I, I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, he utters the phrase "my moths," uh, and just it's 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 pretty glorious. So anyway, he hated being uh, seated in a big chair on the dais of the Moth Council. Only four of the moths had attended in person; the rest were present in hollow only, with their appearance costing more than the admiral thought their input was worth. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Uh, I'm going to skip, skip a wee bit here to some of the dialogue. If this is a serious threat, Admiral, then we implore you to defend our worlds. If it is a trap, then we would likewise wish for you to keep our ships in Imperial space. So some of the moths here are not altogether interested in joining, you know, the new Republic in dispelling the threat. They're saying we've got to hold our own systems and protect our ships. Mm -hmm. The Admiral pressed his fingers together. As I have told you all before, this is no trap. The threat to the New Republic is real. Their request for aid is real. And this is where I'm like, okay, I'm down with the Admiral now. Because yeah. the first chapter, I was like, there's something. This yeah, guy can't be genuine, right? But now he's talking to the moths that way. It's like, okay, obviously, he's a cool guy. Exactly. Well, moth fel Felnick. His jaw shook in anger. They well, should at be least a, his lips didn't <clears throat> peel back Shut up. in anger. God, I hate that. <laughs> they should be allowed to crumble. Had they not destroyed the Empire, this threat would be as nothing. The Emperor would have dealt with it in a blink of an eye. No, in an eye blink. <laughs> the Emperor's eye. Bastion's own moth, uh, Soretti, young though he was, leaned forward. I fail to understand how, Flannick, Flannick, you can make that statement. The New Republic defeated the Empire, and now the Yuz and Vong prey on them. It stands to reason they would have had, they would have beaten the Empire as well. No, the Death Star would have destroyed them all, actually. In one fell swoop, got it. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure that they wouldn't have had any uh, Bothans to help them. Plans. You know, the interesting <laughs> thing is, is I actually wonder what that super weapon would have done against, well, uh, we can't get too far here, but let's just say if <laughs> hypothetically the Yuzen Vong had a really big Death Star sized ship, which I'm sure they don't have. Yeah, which will never happen. But if they did, how the Death Star super weapon would have affected it, because if you, you think about relative size, they have a giant ship, then it would conceivably also have a giant Dobbin Basil. Right, mm -hmm. which would probably be perfectly capable of defending itself against the Death Star. I know, that's an interesting question. I, I don't know. I think that's a that's a cool hypothetical. Can the Death Star shoot rapid fire? 
I don't think so. I mean, we've never so, obviously seen it do a right. follow up shot because one shot pretty much chain, destroys the planet. Chain gun style, just. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, crap, we destroyed every planet ever. <laughs> Fire each reactor in succession. <laughs> but, but you got to go through all the steps. Just, they're all doing it really fast, like, boo, boo, boo. <laughs> I don't think that could go fast. <laughs> it would. You got to have the one guy flipping switches, one guy turning knobs, okay, one so guy with if, the overhead, you know, the dishes shifter. were all over the Death Star and it also spun rapidly. Well, you'd have so it would be right? constantly firing in every direction. <laughs> Just everything died. <laughs> Sir, we're the only intelligent life left. We, we destroyed st- everything. We killed them all. Anyway, let's let's move on here. And then Darth Vader <laughs> in all voice. I killed him. Yeah, <laughs> Sreddy, I would have to ask you this: given your anal- analysis, why would we commit our forces to defend the New Republic when, by your estimations, our forces are clearly inferior? That's not what he said, but no. okay. We should do it because it's the right thing to do. The right thing to do. I'll snarl at that. Yeah. Provide aid and support to Yeah, sucker. (laughs) To those who bleed us dry, destroying our economies, flooding our worlds with items that erode our culture. Oh, this is a trap. And we've fallen well and good into it. What are you doing here? So at this point, Pelion he you know gives you know a little nod to Seretti. He's like, Yeah, you're a cool kid. The wisdom You're the only one here I like. Yeah. The wisdom of my elders is something that weighs heavily when I'm given to consider serious matters such as this. Your experiences from before the death of the Emperor through the period of the warlords to now, holding together this fragile new empire, these are all my values. My experiences are few in comparison since I was young when the Emperor perished. My coming of age was in the midst of the rebellion. My family fled Imperial Cent my family fled Imperial Center, okay, when it fell and eventually arrived here where I entered the Imper- the Empire service. Perhaps since my eyes were open to the conflict only after the Emperor's decline, I see things differently. I do not see through the lens of fury, the pain of losses, and the melancholy over the past. I view what the New Republic has done, and while like you, I do not think they have done everything as well as they might. I am not blind to what they've done. Let us not forget that six years ago, had they wanted to, they could have crushed us. It was this empire that had almost ripped them apart through treachery, and yet they did not punish us all, all of us for the actions of very few. They sued for and permitted us an honorable peace, as is evident by the fact that we have forces they can solicit for their aid. Very intelligent, young man. Yes, this request they have made of Admiral Pelion is no trap, no threat. It is an honest request, one that they have made, not because of how we see them, but how they see us. They have asked, not demanded. They see us as their equals. And if we do not see the value in responding to that sort of overture, we are very blind and very foolish and deserve to be swallowed whole by those, by them or these Yuzen Vong or anyone else. So this actually gets the contingent of Moss. Is you're kind of like nodding. It's like okay, yeah, cool. And Pelion's like, yeah, cool, okay. As always, I find your commentary and advice useful, my Moss. <laughs> That's our word. But I must remind you that I command Imperial Spaces Pelion. By the way, I summon you to this meeting not to seek advice, but to advise you and warn you. When we allow the people to know what is happening in the New Republic and what our response to it will be, there will be plenty who react, as some of you have. They will see no reason to support those they see as enemies. I expect you will find it in yourselves to be persuasive. To the contrary. I thank Moff Seretti, jeez, for I thank him. I I didn't thank him. I thank him (laughs) for his eloquence and command him. To you as an example, commend him. God, I can't command read. him to you as an example. I command him. I think. I think him and command him. I thank <laughs> him and commend him. Two different words. So there we go. The empire is is in. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that, that's that's pretty cool. Now Seretti's actually in the room with Pelion, and they kind of have a little bit of a conversation. 
You did not chastise them too badly for their poor manners. This is Serenity. If I were to do that, they would gain the impression that their antics concern me. Good point. Bastion's forces will be glad to join you. I am still a reservist. If you require any my service, I am cert- I am certain my administration can function in my absence. I'd love to have you with me. Effen? Effen. Effen? It's Effen Soretti, bro. <laughs> <laughs> e P H. My well, boss, I just, let a- us welcome Effen Soretti. E P H I N. Epfen. Effen. It's Effen Soretti. Epin. It's Effen Soretti. <laughs> what the heck? There's got to be a different pronunciation of that that we're not seeing, right? E-fine. It's probably E-fine. E-f- <laughs> E-fin. Ep- ep- Epin. I don't know. I'm going to call him Effin. He's Effin Soretti for life. Moth Effin Soretti. Yeah. Oh, or maybe that's that's just him saying Effin there. It's not his actual <laughs> name. I'd love to have you here with me. Effin. Effin, but I think. <laughs> Effin, but I think we can use your efforts in organizing the other moths. Oh, as long as I don't rebel against you. I'd kind of ra- weird. <laughs> yeah, it was a random. I'd rather have the people with us than against us. And again, if I mismanage things too badly that you need to rebel, better you running things than Crowell or Flinnick. That's pretty amazing that he respects this guy so much. Like, look, if I mess up, better for you to take over than anyone else. Yeah. So just make sure you do. Exactly. <laughs> Oh, chapter 12. God, we spent some time in there. Let's head to chapter 13. So this is, uh, this is actually, we can be pretty brief on this. I think the first stage here is, um, Gavin sitting down with Jaina and telling her basically what the plan was. Now I, I, I don't, he didn't exactly know all the specifics, but he basically let Jaina know. It's like, even if I did, I wouldn't tell you. Yeah. And she got pretty pissed off about this. Well, she did, but I think she kind of understands. She she understands eventually because here's the thing. She is the wisest of the three children. Oh, for she sure. She can understand these 100%. things if she takes a little time. to. It, was a, hu- it was a humbling moment. Yeah. There are people, not in her squadron, but there are people in general, especially on the Rao Roost, that look at her as sort of like a privilege, almost a brat. Yep. Not because they have met her and know her, but she's a solo kid and she's entitled. And this is like fake news territory where yeah. I can say whatever I want in the news and it's true. Um, not that everything's fake news. It's just a thing. Uh, but, you know, in this case, well, I think Jane is a brat because she's clearly been coddled and raised in privilege and had a silver spoon up her butt for her entire life. Which isn't really true. She is the most humble. But even she admits that after this, it's like, you know... I kind of needed that humbling a little bit too. So she's ready to accept that. And Gavin, I think is pretty happy that, you know, she was able to take that in the right light. Yeah. It's a test. Yeah. To an extent. Well, you're, you're exactly right. Yeah, it's most definitely a test. But it's I, also to show that she is not getting a privilege over any other members. Exactly. Of the squadron. No preferential treatment for sure. Cause that's the thing about being a soldier. You're not always apprised of all the details, but you got to follow the orders mm-hmm. and eventually you'll get the big picture. Sometimes. <laughs> and hopefully you agree. <laughs> the only other part here, we do have a recon mission, and I think this was the Cernpidal. Cernpidal. I might have a note on Cernpidal. Well, I anyway, what do we find? What do we find on Cernpidal? We find a ship. A Death Star-sized ship. Big old skipper. Well, and there are some thoughts about trying to launch an attack. It's being grown, so it's not yeah. ready to roll. But it's like, well, we can and there's attack these it. There's snails yeah. everywhere. There there's, are snails eating away at the coral, and then little snails are eating away what it erodes away. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's big snails and little snails and medium-sized snails, and some snails that are just right. That's right. But they're all snails, bro. Yeah, snails, bro. But anyway, so they, they quickly tick off. It's like, no, we can't attack this. This is strictly recon. We got to get the information back, and then maybe we can do something about it. question is, are they going to regret that? Well, they don't really have the armament to take yeah. it down, and that's yeah. that's the big issue. 
They could kill some snails, but they probably breed, and the snails will just come back. True enough. Well, I mean, the thing is, is does it have a reactor that they can blow? Does it have a two-meter-wide hole that they can shoot a proton bolt down, proton torpedo? Torpedo, no bolt. Whatever. Proton bolt. <laughs> hey, maybe that's a... That's uh, another shirt. Proton bolt. <laughs> Jesus. But, I mean, conceivably, it you know, doesn't have its own little... Ventilation shaft. I mean, it's living, so it could be. <laughs> What's its flaw? Does it have? They use involved. We're not good at this. Could you create a flaw when you're building your ship? Well, I mean, the, the ships kind of have to eat, right? So they have to. Do they pass waste? Do they have a waste hole? <laughs> the exhaust <laughs> port. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot the exhaust port. It worked last time. Let's see if it works this time. Other That's way. my bot. Exhaust port. Exactly. <laughs> Okay, so anyway, let's, uh, unless you had anything else to say about Chapter 13. No, I don't have any more comments on exhaust ports. I would hope not. Chapter 14. Oh, man. Cornhorn. Yeah, so they, Corn uh, arrives on Garky. Yeah, Garqui, Garky. Yeah. I pronounced it Garky the entire time I was reading Garky? this. Garky? So. Garky. They're basically, they're, you know, doing some reconnaissance, going to meet up with a potential cell here and uh, scout the Vong is sort of their, their plizan. Do you only write Vong on your notes? I do. Like I do. Yeah, I normally do. I never write Yuzin. Uh, Yuzin is spelled Y-U-U-Z-H-N. I think it's just a lot easier to put Vong yeah. than try and We all know what thing. we're talking about. <laughs> exactly. So, God, I didn't really notate a whole ton of this. There is a little bit of a tension, though. Um, the Nagari are essentially honor-bound mm-hmm. to avenge their fallen brethren. So they're kind of like, well, i got to watch them, make sure they're not trying to go off and kill everybody. But even then, like, Ganner has a score to settle. Corn, in a way, sort of does, too. So part of this is really making sure that nobody just pops off and tries to start fighting using Vong, yeah. random using Vong yeah. and blowing their cover. Or, you know, Jason might just decide to go to a monastery at a given moment. So <laughs> I'm leaving to meditate on the other side of the planet. Yep. So Corn, I don't have a ship. True. So Corn does spot a young man. Um, and he prayed pr- Roma. Yep. And he projects an image, like, to get him to turn his head so he can close some distance. Um, and then as Cor- as the young man sees him, he yells, Green! And Corn, Yellow! <laughs> anyway, that was their yeah. signal. <laughs> That's great. Uh, green! <laughs> Could you just imagine you get scared and like, Black! And I'm Purple! <laughs> <laughs> green! <laughs> I also imagine, like, when he projects the image into his brain, it's not really an image, it's just him yelling, Turn around! <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we do get a little bit of uh, sort of family history here. So Corn is um, familiar with the name. My father was with the New Republic. He died during the Thrawn War. Mm, what's that? Tie-ins! Uh, your mother, she was from Garki? The tall blonde man nodded. Dineba Tesk. Where is it? I'm trying to find that exact. One oh seven. You're you're a chapter be- or you're a page behind. Dineba Tesk. Dineba Tesk. Whatever. I don't know. I don't know. She fled the Empire. Effin. The- <laughs> Effin. Yeah. Everyone's Effin. Effin now. Tesk. She fled the Empire, met my father, and married him. She came back after he died. A shiver ran down Corn's spine. I met her once. I yeah. met her once. How is she? How is she? She did. Is she single, bro? Oh, wait, I'm not single. Dang it. She did. She did. Using Vaughn got her in the first wave because of the story she told of those old days here of fighting against the Empire, the empire and being so close to the remnant, she prepared things. Wasn't like she was a nut about it. <laughs> she just hid things some. 
times. I mean, she wasn't a nut, but she hid things. Like, you know, there's some guns over here, ration packs, there's an atomic ammo bomb. And a can of beans over here. Yeah, yeah, she wasn't crazy, though. Uh, her foresight is why we're alive. The resistance, that is. Oh, the resistance. Another resistance. No, that's our thing. Yeah. Just because we changed our name doesn't mean you get to appropriate our culture. <laughs> wow. So Corin uh, remembers his mother as a naive but enthusiastic woman who had been brave enough to who had been brave enough to oppose the empire on a world where no rebellion was really necessary. <laughs> we don't wanna. So we don't need to. It was probably like utopia. It's like we'll take care of you, and they actually did. And she's like, no. Yeah. We don't like the Empire. Well, no, here, no, here's a gun to protect yourself. I'm going to shoot you with it. No, I'm just kidding. That's, that's <laughs> bad. That's, that's bad. Uh, let's see here. She was very special, your mother, to me. Oh. She got herself away. I was just along for the ride. My father was her hero and the love of her life. But she remembered you fondly, just not as the love of her life. She had your picture. Pain yeah. of regret arced through corn. Should have gotten in touch with her. Should have known to do something when her husband died. God, this is also <laughs> weird. It's <laughs> probably because we're reading it weird, yeah. but no, it's totally innocent. She, he he just should have known what to do with her when her husband died, you know? Things. Uh let's see here. So basically I'll call my people, you call yours. Yeah. A rendezvous about two. That alright with you, boo? Yeah. <laughs> That's horrible. You're a horrible person. So anyway, they're going to uh, go scout out the Usenvong camp. Uh, they see some little reptoids, which is cool, I guess. Just reptoids. Reptoids everywhere. Bunch of growths on slaves, but they're not quite as jagged as, yeah. as the former. They're, they're a little bit smoother. Yeah. They're getting better at it. <laughs> uh, the Usenvong have been here months. Uh, they produced a couple of Batches of, you know, whatever reptile people, reptile and people, reptile crab people. people, and then they kind of uh, hatch a plan that they're going to capture one when they have their war games. It's yeah. great. Well, you know, they practice a lot, so you know they got war games. So we're just going to sneak in and steal one. It'll be cool. And then they they never end up doing it. See, so yeah, it's it's yeah, I know. <laughs> so it's like a kidnap mission. Yeah. Which is fun, I guess. Okay, chapter fifteen. We uh, we get back into Shido Shai. Yeah, Shade Al Shay and uh, Elagos's elegant journey. Always gold downed, Kamasi. It's never just Kamasi. Yeah, it's always that's, gold down. That's true. They do they do use that as a, as a descriptor, like uh, like you'd forget. So Dane. Uh, Shadow's uh, little aid here or whatever. We have a couple of pages of him just like questioning his commands yeah. and telling the, you know, like other people are saying stuff. It's not me. I I'm mean, loyal. I'm loyal. I like other you. People. And you're pretty cool and all. Kill but me. Don't there are kill people me. Kill that me. are like, you know, they're, they're trying to say that you're doing some bad stuff and you're making a big mistake and that I should probably stab you repeatedly when you sleep, but not me because I'm loyal yeah. and you're a good dude. And his only response is, why didn't you kill them? <laughs> yeah, he's like, if there were dissenters, you should have killed them. <laughs> okay, cool. Okay, but anyway. <laughs> so anyway, I, I did want to get into some of the uh, back and forth between Elgos and, and Shay here because it, it, it's still kind of interesting. Elgos is kind of doing some labors, I guess, uh, trying to understand the legacy of pain. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see here. You have worked hard today and yet accomplished nothing. On the contrary, I understand even more your belief that pain is the only constant. My rational mind wishes to reject this idea, but can only do so if I disassociate myself with the reality of my physical self. That's deep, bro. It's real deep, bro. You realize that is folly. Why? Philosophers debate whether or not we are creatures of elemental material or if we somehow have an ethereal nature about us or to us. 
something that is more than our body and its functioning. Proof proof of that is impossible to find, so we are left having to accept that perhaps uh, we are nothing more than creatures of meat and bone, meat and bone and blood. If so, we are born in pain and die in pain and no pain throughout. To deny this is to express a belief in the unprovable, which is a fraud we perpetuate upon ourselves. You do not allow yourselves to be deceived in this manner. You understand things better than many of my own people, and yet you do not fully accept this to be true. You have told me you believe in gods. Are they not uh, extracorporeal creature? Extracorporeal? Yeah, show me where it's at. No, I mean, it's, it's hyphenated, extracorporeal. I mean, it, I, I guess I've never Strange. heard that put together. Okay. Mm. Uh, normally, you just say corporeal. Yeah. But but they're extra. They're extra. They're extra. This was two thousand. This was two thousand, and they were extra, extra back then. <laughs> That's actually a phrase that I really hate, like swag. Are extra you, is worse than swag. You know what? You're extra. It's like, what the hell does that mean? You just do a lot more than most people. You're extra. Well, how about you just say I'm really cool or something? That like takes too long. Offer. I got things to do, bro. Because I'm extra. <laughs> yeah, apparently. <laughs> Uh, no more than the ability of a fish to breathe water should suggest you to somewhere, somehow have the capability to do so. The gods are the gods. They are aspects of pain and of the universe. Uh, you can join their fellowship if we are true to reality. (laughs) Elagos raises his hand. (laughs) Call on me, teacher. When all you are is pain, you transcend your physical form? Yes. Okay, so that's interesting. So basically their belief is if they're if they embrace enough pain, then they're released from their physical pain. They're released from their pain. Well, they're <laughs> released from their physical being. Yeah. They're yeah. they're more corporeal at that point, which okay. Yeah. Yes, that means you die. You're in so much pain you die and that and then you're dead. <laughs> but no more pain. The goal in having so much pain in their life is to no longer have pain. And die. Yeah, Yeah, okay, whatever. Then it would seem there is more I need to endure since I have not transcended yet. What a sarcastic dick. I I guess I need to move more rocks around because I haven't transcended corporeal form of your gods yet. Yeah. (laughs) You are fatigued and I shall let you go rest soon. Uh, Dane Lane. Dane Leanne. Dane Lane. Dane Lane. Brought me news of events in our holdings. It seems your assessment that the New Republic would withdraw their probes in light of their failure at Garky were incorrect. The same ship appeared at Cernpital to see what we were doing there. Did it find out? Yes. Play our little game. Don't ask me what you are what we are doing at Cernpadul. Merely inquire if the information is no longer proprietary. Uh, a weird section there. Yeah, it's, it's an inner <laughs> monologue. It could be they did. Our forces were misdeployed and did not stop them. They scouted the system and withdrew. There is, of course, a chance that they will fail to correctly analyze the data they collected. You do not believe that. No, the leader who placed his ships where he did is too wise to make such an error. There was the same ship that helped evacuate Dembrillian and fought at us at Dantooine. I believe you told me the admiral commanding it was a Bothan. I believe you asked me to confirm information you had from prisoners interrogated here. I am certain that if the ship is yet commanded by Admiral Crefe, he'll again turn up where you do not expect him. So you sought to fool me with your earlier assessment. The admiral's appearance... At Serpital surprises me and you. I'm merely am predicting on the basis of this fact. He content his continued unpredictability. I see. I see. Thanks. It strikes You're my me. new best friend. Yeah. We're cool. Wanna wanna go wanna go feel some more pain together? Get some ice cream. I, I set it up two embraces of pain. <laughs> and then we can get some ice cream after. There might be razor blades in it. Extra pain. Yeah. <laughs> Two mint chocolate chips, extra pain, please. God. So, Halloween in using wrong culture, are they disappointed if they don't get razor blades in their candy? I would assume so. Oh, I cut off my tongue. Sweet. 
<laughs> oh, let's see here. The Admiral is Bothan. How does he compare to the Chiss Admiral you mentioned? Tyrants. What? What's his? What's his name? Uh, he does not have Thrawn's habits, but is considered highly skilled. <laughs> Who's Thrawn? Well, there's books about him, both uncanon and canon. There are probably going to be books about him in about 20 years. You should check yeah. that out, too. Just hold on. Yeah. Uh, but he's Bothan. They slaughtered people. They did some, and more of them are not to be trusted. But to judge Admiral Crefe by other Bothans is a mistake you should not make. Well played, Elagos. You forced me to choose now to believe what you're telling me or assume you're tricking me, so I will believe the opposite. If I'm here to learn from you and teach you, then tricking you would be stupid. I warn you fairly. These are those. These. There are those. There are those. <laughs> Can't read. Thanks. Uh, there are those. Dane among them. Who Dane. think? Yeah. Who think I could be uh, scared by your words or influenced into acting against our best interest? They believe my time with you has tainted me. Perhaps, Perhaps it has. Does. Has your time with me? Tainted you? Have we tainted each other? Ew. <laughs> Have you learned enough of pain that would share, perhaps share it with others? Inflict upon them? No. Violence is upsetting to my people. Horribly so. But you have killed in the past. Only to save others from horror. I would not willingly inflict pain. Even if the victim wished pain? Like me? <laughs> Fifty shades of using balls. Such as strapping you to the embrace? No, I would not do that. If I threatened to kill a person for every minute you did not? Well, maybe. No. <laughs> Any people who are subject to such a capricious order of death are beyond my protecting. If not killed, the, killed then, they could be killed later, at your whim. They would never be safe as long as they were in your power. He'd be a horrible hostage negotiator. Yeah. It's like, listen, you're either going to kill him or you're not. So, of course, I've often thought about that. If you were taken hostage, and let's just say I had a gun, they had a gun. And, you know, it's like, I'm going to kill him. Give me your whatever, your diamonds, because I have those. Yeah. Uh, and so I'm thinking to myself, what would I do with that in, in the situation? Would I be like, I'm going to put my gun down and potentially put myself at risk? Mm -hmm. Or would I just be like, well, if you kill him, just understand. I'm not going to just kill you. I'm going to shoot you multiple times yeah. and watch you die slowly. Yeah. So you you're just going to keep using them against me. <laughs> so let's put it this way. You put him on a stretcher. I'm going to put you on a torture rack <laughs> and then a stretcher. Multiple stretches. But that's cruel. But that's cruel. Life's cruel. Anyway, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, so if you killed him, okay. So anyway, they, they actually seem and to his have... his response to that is, I love you. Yeah. <laughs> they have you a good... understand me. They have a good exchange, but basically it comes down to Shay basically saying, it's like, well, we're going to be tested when your republic comes. Oh, man, we're, we're narrowing it down. Chapter... 16 and i don't i don't know the, the, this uh this chapter Should i could summarize pretty easily but anakin and chalco decide to leave the ship finally knew it was going to happen and, from the very beginning well but they're 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 going out and they're they're determined to find um the shark core sorry up at garros 4 yeah so they're basically saying, you know, Luke and them are looking here. We can look here. They sneak off. I like this. Like, they sneak off the ship. It's like, no one's near the ship. Why do you have to sneak well, off Well, they've the got ship? the droids, yeah. I guess. They're going to tell on us. Um, however, and of course, they go to a bar. Why wouldn't they go to a bar? Well, this is one of the things, like, Chalco isn't sheltering Anakin from the seedier parts like his dad or his uncle or yeah. even Lando would have. He's basically showing him how this how this whole thing is. And I did actually have a, a page here, 125. Chalco basically is getting information and Anakin says, but you didn't pay him. Sure I did. 
I told him that a shrewd oper- uh, operator on this rock can make a lot of money in the short term buying up bulk lots of rooms and hotels. What? What I told him only makes sense, Anakin. This world is a nice world. Lots of people would want to live here. Now the refugees coming from the worlds using Vong of Hit, they'll end up here too. They'll need rooms and somebody will pay for them. This guy buys blocks or more like pass the information somebody will buy them for them and somebody will buy them off of him. Inside a year, he can double his money. I gave him information for information. I never thought you never had to, kid, but I know your father did. Sure, I thrive a bit, but, you know, pretty much I'm a trader. Yeah. What's that? Thieve a bit. Thieve a bit. I'm sorry, yeah. He thrives a lot. Well, he did thrive. <laughs> uh, I'm a trader. Or, yeah, trader. <laughs> like your father. No, I'm, I'm a trader. I'm I mean, a trader. Like your father or Talon Card. <laughs> <laughs> There's two R's uh, I carry my inventory in my head I look at things, I figure out angles And I make something out of them Okay, I understand that But don't you see that what you're doing is harmful? Harmful? Get out of here, kid I only stabbed four people this morning No, think about it Let's say the rooms get bought up And the price is raised to make them hard on the refugees The government will help them out Sure, but where does the government get its money? Yeah, taxpayers. I know where you're going, kid, but hey, kid. You think I paid taxes? Do you think I pay taxes, kid? Kid taxes? Nope, but people you thieve off of do. If they have less money, then they don't have things you want to take. You you pay no matter, and the hut. (laughs) You're trying to hut it it out of them. (laughs) No, just consider the consequences of your actions. You want me to starve, kid? Is that what it is? Kid, kid, kid. It's an interesting way to, to think about the way Chalco thinks. I mean, he's he's trying to make deals. He's giving information for information. Not hurting anybody, really. Yeah. Well, maybe. <laughs> Only taxpayers. He ain't one of them. It don't matter. So anyway, they do wind up finally catching up with uh, Deshara. And, uh, oh, really, Deshara kind of catches up with them. Yeah, yeah, for the most part. But... Anakin, uh, he gets tricked by a force projection, runs into a wall. Damn Twilex. And, and uh, he's captured, so he's a hostage. Didn't see that coming at all. Plot devices, plot devices. Everywhere you look, plot devices. Chapter 17. Uh, let's see here. Uh, is there anything? What, what did you have anything for chapter seventeen? Because like I, I do have eventually something, but so much of this early part is kind of you know Jason sort of Jasoning himself. <sighs> Jason witnessed a local ambush against three bugs and sixty reptile slaves. I mean, there's a cool little fight scene, but uh, it's a little bit further into the chapter. Yeah, well, I mean, they're kind of waiting for the big thing here. Um, just, I, I don't like to skip over stuff, but I really just didn't really take a whole ton out of that uh, in, until 132. <clears throat> what am I looking for here, Jason Shivered? I remember the frustration and humiliation of his defeat on Belkadin, later in Danceween. Uh, if there had been any doubt in my mind about the ignoble nature of killing and warfare that erased it. Um let me see here. Again, he he's still he's still got this paradoxical thing about Jedi. Yeah. They all saw us as glowing examples of the Jedi, but is that what I want? <clears throat> okay. He'd long wrestled with the paradox of the Jedi. His uncle had been made into a weapon and directed at the Empire. Uh, and I really get tired of this reference. Honestly. I know. It's so annoying. I know. Luke Skywalker had redeemed his own father from evil and had destroyed the fount of evil in the galaxy. He had continued to oppose evil up to and including the final battle with the Empire and even beyond that. Uh, As nearly as he could tell, Jedi were meant to be warriors. The problem was that Luke Jedi, uh, Luke Jedi Skywalker, <laughs> Luke Skywalker, Luke and Skywalker, Luke Skywalker's training had been incomplete. The Emperor's drive to eradicate the Jedi had been so thorough that what information about them did remain 
seldom included any good instructional material. Uh, much of what seemed to be solid was left behind by the emperor with deliberate errors in it. Uh, following those paths would leave one of the dark side and might even usher in a new era of the Sith. Jason knew in his heart that there was something more to being a Jedi than being a warrior. In his uncle, he saw glimmerings of it. Though Luke had so many demands on him that trying to focus on anything aside from problem solving was impossible. Well, maybe if you freaking other Jedi would learn how to grow up and like mm-hmm. stop being selfish little turds, Luke it wouldn't be has that bad. Eighty children. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, Jason also saw something more than just a warrior. Okay, Corrin insisted again and again that everyone focus on the objective, which was gathering data of Hughes involved. Okay, well, that's getting a little bit off of here. Uh, if them and others, Jason saw hints of philosopher and teacher. He appreciated that because uh, it suggested to him a different course, but he wasn't sure that was for him either. I keep seeing the paths I don't think I want to take. But all that that does is leave me in one spot. There has to be another path. There's always got to be another path. You can't just pick something, Jason. Well, he, he's, he's, he's looking through the lens of a child, though. I mean, a teacher, a warrior, yeah. you know, a blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, you know, I don't know, man. I mean, I, I, I think you're, you, what do you, it's, it's like the classic teenager. It doesn't know what they want to do. So they wind up working at fast food for a little while and trying to go to college. Yep. There's nothing wrong with that. You have to eventually. He's you have in to a placeholder get, spot in life. Well, you have to get out of that spot and yep. then just take the paths and see which one you like. Yeah. Stop trying to avoid the path because you don't think you'll like it. Push yourselves onto the path Stop and figure it out if it's something for you. Perfect before you start down <sighs> the path. Yep. It's like someone who says, "Well, I'm going to go to the gym, but everything has to be perfect. I have to have the habit." I have to have the perfect playlist, the perfect gear. has to be the right day to do it. Just go. Just do something. <laughs> exactly. So anyway, the mass battle starts to happen in good old Ganner. I'm going to read through some of this here. The centermost Yuzenvong warriors spun and snapped an order that parted the reptoids heading towards Ganner bringing his amphistaff up with two hands, not just one. He pumped it in the air. (laughs) He just pumped that amphistaff. He said something, and Jason was certain from the tone that it was a challenge. The warrior began to twirl his amphistaff, waiting. Ganner thumbed his lifesaver. Life, life, lifesaver, lightsaver. It's a lifesaver. His lightsaber to life. We're both hungry. (laughs) Got to hurry up. Producing a sulfurous yellow blade. A sulfur, sulfurous... Yeah, okay. Sulfurous. That's why I don't like yellow blades. <laughs> well, sulfurous is like a smell more so than a... I, I don't know. Is there a sulfurous yellow in the crayon box? Probably now. <laughs> That's why there's 25 crayons now in boxes. Yeah. Uh, over a meter in length. Uh, with his free hand... What's the standard lightsaber? Uh, good question. I don't know. Because a meter is like three feet. Yeah, that sounds about right. Sure. Not really a useful descriptor, really, when you think about it. Why? Because you hate the metric system? No, I'm just saying because it sounds like an average lightsaber. (laughs) Well, I mean, you know, sometimes three inches is average. (laughs) Well, we do get inches and meters mixed up a lot when we're trying to describe lengths. Yeah, that's true. (laughs) (laughs) Guy jokes. Uh, with his free hand, he waved the warrior in. Content mask scanner's face. Come on, buddy. Come yeah. on, buddy. Uh, while his movements appeared casual, almost sloppy, compared to the tightness of the Usain Vong's approach. Toit. Usain Vong. Toit. Like a toy. Yeah. The... <laughs> The Yuzen Vong warrior flew at Ganner, smashing his amphisaf down with terrific force. Ganner blocked the blade high and smashed his left hand up in the warrior's face mask. He caught the edge of it with the heel of his hand, spinning the warrior away. Ow. Probably yeah. ow. <laughs> then Ganner laughed loudly, and some of the humans hooted a cheer of ridicule after him. You suck! You stop hitting him, you suck! I'd <laughs> like to see you fight without that lightsaber. Yeah. The Nagiri moved against Yuzenvong's slaves like rancors through Jawas. Fist and feet blurred as they struck, 
crushing bone. And Don't you like that's and, always how they describe a gory fight? It's just fists and feet blurring around. And everyone's yeah. dead. Oh, a trio of reptoids closed on Jason. He parried a slash from a staff, then reposed his green blade through the reptoids' chase. Chest. Chase. Chased. Ch- <laughs> chased chest. Two blaster bolts from snipers burned hot and red through the second reptoid. Jason shoved the reptoid on his blade off. Why Wait, would what? You he's, just, he's, he's just waving he it around. He shoved on his blade off. <laughs> he didn't take his blade out. He just he, he held it, and then with his off hand, he just shoved it off. Got it. Didn't even use the force. Uh, the use and Vong warrior fighting Ganner had recovered and tugged his face mask back in place. His amphistaff spun in a blur. The warrior came in fast, attacking low and high. Not just low, not just high, not medium, but low and high. Ganner black, block, blacked some cuts, blocked some cuts, <laughs> ducked back from others. Then one grazing slash opened a red line on his left thigh. Red line. Ganner, Ganner snarled, and the warrior yelled and increased the violence of his assault. Ganner let back, limping, his leg faltering. Jason saw him go down, falling back on his haunches. His haunches. <laughs> his butt. Ganner raised his lightsaber in a weak defense as the warrior charged forward. Infostaff raised for, for a two-handed blow that would crush Ganner's skull. And he did, and Ganner's dead. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Blaster bolts scissored through the air, but none touched the Yuzenvong warrior. So that was useless <laughs> to even mention. Exactly. Jason glanced at the hatch cover, gathered the force, and hurled it. And her to hurled it and shield Ganner, but the there was okay, okay. yeah, but You're there was no too. time. He hoped a bolt might catch the warrior, or Corn might be able to project an image in his brain to save Ganner. Like he's, yeah. well, I'm gonna hurl this manhole cover at him as a shield, and then somebody's gonna shoot him. Then Corn's gonna make him think stuff, and then, <laughs> but that did not happen. Ganner had already saved himself. The Usenvong warrior in a furious headlong rush. Stepped into a hole from which Ganner had emerged. His right leg sank up to mid thigh, then his leg got trapped. And Jason could hear it snap halfway across the plaza. Really? Sure. He heard it. The warrior's torso smashed into the ground, his helmet, his face bounced off, faceplate bounced off, then Ganner's backhand slash carried away his head from his eyes up. So he cut off his forehead. So Ganner's in a hole. Yeah. And then he gets out of the hole, and the Yuzenvong warrior gets his leg in the hole, snaps his leg, and then, you know, I don't know, hits his head, and then Ganner chops off part of his head. Yeah, sure. Cool. Yeah. Uh, One of the other Yuzenvong warriors shrieked aloud. Shattering the momentary silence marked the warrior's death. Uh, knotted ball humans fighting reptoids separated. Using long warriors screeched another command. The human thralls turned, snarled, galloped towards resistance. They galloped members. like horses. Mouths burned in their eyes, replaced the vestige of human. So they're getting charged. Yeah. And then we leave them there. <clears throat> chapter 18. All right, we're done. <laughs> One more chapter. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. So uh, this can actually be summed up pretty quickly. I actually, uh, Deshara contacts Luke using Anakin's calm and basically says, give me all the plans. I'll give you your nephew, which Luke finds out there are no plans in this university. There's nothing there. Yeah. So they're trying to think about a bluff or what to do. Well, then Anakin all tied up. Nice snug, like a bug and rug. Sitting there talking to Deshara. You wouldn't understand. <clears throat> You're a privileged kid. No one understands anything in this galaxy, apparently. And then we get uh, we get old Chalco. Yeah, he bursts in, blaster ablaze, getting ready to shoot her. Well, he he has that. Uh, let me see if I can't refine that oh, word. Oh, it's great. He and. He, has, he buys this cloak from a guy who the, the, supposedly... The salami skin? Yeah. Whatever that was. I'm trying to see if I can't. Oh, that's annoying. Hold it right there. Uh, did I, 
it say? I could have sworn it. They do at some point. I think it's after the confrontation, though. Yeah, she no, wasn't supposed to be able. They said it would make a Jedi powerless. Are you, what are you talking about? The the, the mirror skin. Uh, Anakin arches eyebrow at his friend. At his friend, their friends. Uh, yell, <laughs> Salamar, Salamari skin with a Y in front. Is that what that thing is? <laughs> yeah, it costs two. That only works if the Salamari is alive. <laughs> Chalico's disabled. However, Deshar isn't necessarily the sharpest tool in the shed. No. She, she even the... says, like, if I sense any use of the force from you, I'm killing you instantly. Yeah, she doesn't sense anything because Anakin's able to maneuver. No, she does. She senses him starting oh, to do it. And true. Like, she's too slow. <laughs> yeah, which is just really... And the... he just throws the blaster at her forehead and knocks her. <laughs> yeah, the whole thing is very, very strange. But anyway, he's able to incapacitate her. They're able to get loose. And then they stun her afterwards. Yep, you... stun her. Give her the stone cold stunner. Yeah, and I didn't realize that a lightsaber can deflect a stun bolt. The same as because it's more of like a ray field than an act. Well, at least in the original movies, that's how it's depicted. Yeah, no, that's true. It's like a big it, it's, circular it, ray field. Well, I don't it, see how yeah, you deflect that. You have you have quite a few that are a much larger field. I don't know, man. I mean, maybe but it just def- absorbed she it. She deflects it back on Chalco and knocks him down. Mace right. Windu was able to, you know, absorb force lightning. True. I mean, as was yeah. Obi Wan. So I mean that's that's something that could be, I guess. Okay. But anyway, we do end here with the two buddies it's like we're gonna be in big trouble, Chalco. Don't worry about a kid. No, kid, kid. my uncle doesn't need to know everything. And then we end chapter 18. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And cliffhanger warrior battle, you know. Yeah. He's going to have to wait another week on that, guys. So. Well, well, we'll definitely get to part part three here very soon. So part two, any uh, any parting thoughts on this? Any parting thoughts parting on thoughts part on two? part two? <sighs> Repetition of F-N. words. F-N. F-N. <laughs> F-N. <laughs> Yes, our constant uh, pronunciation of names should amuse all of you, hopefully. But, uh, but yeah, no, I, I'm I'm pretty locked in here. We're we're halfway through the book. I got a lot more Shugging to discuss along. for sure. So, anyway, folks, make sure that if you have any questions or comments on the reread, uh, you know, hit us up on Facebook. Check us out on Twitter, or. You can uh, send us a long form email to tcplanpodcastgmail.com. All the links for all this stuff is down below in the description boxes. You can listen to us wherever podcasts are played. Casted. Casted, yeah, for sure. Uh, I've been making sure that we're up everywhere we can. And you can also support us on Patreon if you would like. It is out there. We have dinner with the Patreons. Just a, you know, little videos, little extra content if you will feel like supporting podcasts out there. Uh, so I guess aside from that, Hopefully you guys have a great rest of your week, and we'll catch you down the road. And as always, may the Force be with you.